In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use flexible audio to fix the timing of a pretty loose multi-track drum performance, often called pocketing drums. Basically, I'm going to try to take the timing of a human performance and lock it to the grid and make it snap so that it falls right on the beat. So what I have here is just a, I'll let you hear it real quickly, it's just a, basically about six bars of a multi-track drum performance that the timing isn't great. Um, and I want to make it feel tighter. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to find out the ballpark range of the tempo of this performance. Now, um, in a perfect world, I would have probably, if I would have recorded this, I would have recorded this to a click track um, in the DAW, in Logic. And that way the drummer would have been very close to the grid that's already in Logic. As it stands now, this is in a tempo, uh, Logic's in a tempo of 120, and this performance is nowhere near 120. If I turn on the click and play it against the drum performance, you see it's completely off. So what I want to do is get close to that and then I can take advantage of flexible audio to help me pocket these drums and get them tight. So I'm going to um, select the first region here. And with that region selected, I'm going to find ballpark tempo off of the kick. I'm using the kick to find the tempo. So with that region selected, I'm going to go to the edit menu, go down to tempo and say detect the tempo of the selected region. Shortcut is option command and T. And so it analyzes the audio file. And it says, hey, the average tempo is around 109 beats per minute. Well, it doesn't feel like that. So I'm going to click in the advanced and I'll see I have some options here. Um, that's the straight time. I want to do probably half time, which is 54.9. Let's try that. Um, it's cool if it writes the tempo information to the audio file. It's cool to use the average tempo. I don't want it to nudge the region to the beat. That throws things off sometimes. So I'm going to uncheck that. Um, and I'm going to apply the region tempo to the project. So it's going to take this 54.9 and apply it to the tempo of logic. Uh, okay. And when I do that, the tempo here is now 54.9. And if I play it against the click now, it's a lot closer to the actual time of the drums. Actually, let me turn that click down a little bit. So I'm going to go here into my uh, mixer and show all of my channel strips here. Oh, my click is wow, way up. Okay, that feels a little bit better. So the click is clicking at the actual tempo of the project. And let's say, okay, if that's the average tempo, I'm going to set the tempo of the entire project to exactly 55 beats per minute. The tempo of the actual performance doesn't matter. I just want to be kind of close to it because I'm going to end up changing the tempo of the overall drum performance at the end. But being close to the tempo makes it easier to pocket. And I like whole numbers, so I rounded it to the nearest whole number, which was 55. And now I'm going to pocket these drums so that they match exactly to that tempo and this grid. So what I'm going to have to do first, before I get into flexible audio and all of that, I'm going to need to put this into a group. So I'm going to hit X to open up my mixer. And I can just show the tracks that are showing here. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last tutorial, which is select all of the tracks, put them in a temporary group, go to the group setting, go put them in group one, and then go back here and open up the group settings. And from the settings menu down here at the bottom, I'm going to go into editing, selection, and make sure phase locked audio is on. And this is very important with this multi-track drum performance. I don't need automation volume or mute. The reason the phase locked audio is important, close this out and close out my mixer, because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be snapping and locking these individual like the kick sound I'm going to be moving it so it snaps to the division in the bar that it's supposed to fall on so when the timing is loose um, like you kind of hear 
like right in here specifically, when I moved this kick over, because all of these audio tracks were recorded at the same time, this kick, even though this is the kick track, there's bleed from the kick on the snare track, and there's bleed from it on the other snare. This is the snare top and the snare bottom, and it's bleed from the kick on the overheads and the hats and the rack. So if these are not phase locked, when I move the kick here, these audio regions won't move with it, and then they will be out of phase, and then I'll have a phasing issue. So with the phase lock audio editing on, when I move one waveform, if you will, the other waveforms on the other track will stay locked with it and they will move in time with it. And you'll see that actually when I start doing the editing. Uh, so now you also see that these cues are back on here. We're going to talk about that really quickly here, but I'm going to go into flexible audio. And then I need to choose a good algorithm for all of my tracks. Now, I can choose either slicing or rhythmic in this particular situation. Again, slicing actually treats them like individual audio files, so that's probably what I'm going to use. Rhythmic works with a rhythmic piece like a drum performance also, but I'm going to use slicing, and it's going to enable slicing on all of the tracks. Now, the cues. The cues are for quantizing, like MIDI, so quantizing these audio regions as if they were MIDI. What it does is it looks at the transient markers on each one of the tracks and it tries to quantize the performance based on whichever one of these tracks you have the cue selected for. So with the cue selected on all, if I went here and tried to quantize to a value like a 16th notes, it'll look at all of these individual markers and it'll try to snap all of them to the closest 16th. This doesn't work great in this multi-track drum session because even if I say, for instance, uh, not select anything but this, let's do this snare track right here. And I'm saying that when I set the quantize, I want you to quantize it by the region and the transients that are in this region. And so if the snare only happens on quarter notes and I set this to quarter notes, I'm thinking that it's going to snap each snare to the closest quarter note and that'll be fine and everything else will move relative to the snare regions. But remember, there's bleed because this was a multi-track drum session. So there's bleed, there's kick on here, there's some hi-hat. So these, trans these are not snare hits. The big ones are snare transients. But all of this stuff in between is either kicks or hi-hats and other things. So quantizing to what I think is a quarter note or maybe even a 16th may not be. It may be a triplet in there from a hi-hat or something else from a kick, and then it just throws everything else out of time. So I usually stay away from that when I have multi-track drums like this. 